Hello, you lovely ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys to the long-awaited finale, round 10 of the Egg Cup. We finally arrived, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -mm -mm. The two people who beat every other opponent that they went up against in this tournament are now going to go head-to-head. -head. And not only that, this is a live match. That's right, we're not using the replay viewer. This is a live match. Both of the players are here, and they're ready to play. Uh, so introducing the first player. His name is Diaphanous. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing his name correctly. A very mysterious player who has never been beaten on the Global League. He almost has as big a win streak as Voice of Akasha. According to him, uh, he's not super comfortable playing live, uh, but he definitely is a very strong opponent. He's been crushing every single opponent in the Egg Cup mercilessly. Again, I've never seen this guy lose. I suspect that he was an alt, but he has confirmed that he is indeed not an alt. He just takes his time, which could be a little bit scary in a live format. However, he is going up against Deadass. Uh, he is currently ranked the 12th best Advanced Wars player in the world. Ratings-wise, they are definitely very, very far apart. However, live matches are weird. Uh, you never quite know how they're going to play out. Now, Deadass, of course, he has played in a live tournament on my channel before. He was part of Season 2. Uh, he beat King Arthur in the first round, and then he got knocked off by Starflash. I think Deadass is a fairly competent live player. So I don't know how Diaphanous is going to hold up in this format. I've never seen him play live before. So, of course, in case you don't know, live match means that both players are here. They don't have much time. Uh, they start with 10 minutes on the clock. Currently, the timers are paused, so they haven't begun playing yet. And they get two extra minutes per turn. Now, if they run out of time, a sort of backup timer will start counting down. And if that counts down to zero, the player is timed out. So both players have to play very quickly. Live games are very fun. Uh, you have to think on your toes. You can't use the move planner. You just kind of have to rely on your gut feeling. So people who are very, very good in standard don't necessarily always tend to be good at live. Anyway, the map that we're playing on today is called End of Entrophy. Uh, this is a map made by Voice of Akasha, actually. It's a mixed base map, one of my favorite ones on the standard ladder. I love this map so much. It has this really cool center here with the rivers and the properties. Uh, you have, like, a lot of fronts. Players can attack in a myriad of different directions here. You usually have conflict in this area, you have conflict in this area, here, here. Kind of similar to Caustic Finale, action just takes place everywhere on this map, and it's going to be very exciting to see how both of these players are going to play. Now, I haven't taken a look at their COs yet, I've uh, obfuscated them for this video, because uh, this is a Tier 4 match, but with the twists. It's Tier 4, but Jake and Adder are banned. Yes, that's right. Jake and Adder are banned, so you don't get to pick the top picks of Tier 4. Additionally, Jugger and Flak are not banned, because I love Luxios. So let us see which COs the players decided to go with. Diaphanous has decided to go with Cole! Okay, I'm not surprised. If you ban Adder, then it's not uncommon to see people pick Discount Adder. So Cole, I mean, he's still pretty decent on this map. There are some roads for him to make use of, so I don't think this is a bad pick at all. Let's take a look at Dead F's CEO, shall we? <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, Dead F's, I love you, man. I love you, man. He picks Flack the Madman. This is absolutely fantastic. Dead F's playing for style points. He's playing for entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe he's underestimating his opponent? I don't know. We'll just have to see. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell both players to get ready now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are off. Uh, now, um, I think, yeah, I was contemplating whether to activate my colorblind add-on, but I think, I think I'm okay with these colors. Diaphanous is, of course, playing gray sky. Deadfs is playing red uh, blaze or whatever they're called. So I think that's fine. Occasionally, you'll see some errors on screen, by the way. Don't pay them no mind. Uh, they don't really matter. It's just the site being unstable, as it has been for a little while now. But uh, as long as there's no fog of war, it should, in theory, be fine. All right, so Deadfs, Diaphanous, they're both opening up infantry. And um, the start of End of Entrophy, usually you want to secure these two properties early on. That's really smart to do. Uh, did they unpause? Let me refresh just to make sure. Yeah, there we go. They have uh, they have unpaused their timers. So that's that's really good. All right, here we go. Okay, good. I had to refresh to make sure that they uh, that they resume their timers. 
So um, yeah, if you don't take these two properties early on, you're gonna be in a bad spot. So it's gonna be interesting to see if both players will try to rush these properties early on or what they intend to do. Now one thing uh, that's incredibly important uh, on this map is that um, we only have a 30 day time limit. That has been a consistent rule for the entirety of the Egg Cup. So that means that this match will not go on longer than 30 days. Now I don't think we're going to see the timer tick out. I would be very, very surprised if that was the case. But you never know. I mean, uh, Endofin Trophy is a pretty wild map, and it can it can go it can it can go back and forth pretty quickly. So we'll see what happens here. So Daphne is going for these two captures here. Both players doing well in their capture phase early on. Pretty nice. Uh, taking this airport early on can be nice. Battlecopters are pretty strong on this map. Um, there are a lot of positions they can go into, which makes them really annoying to deal with. If you can get them into the center, they're very, very strong. Because anti of course, can't go here, so they can hide here. So, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see if either player will go Battlecopters. Now, Flak, he is a terrifying Battlecopter commander, actually. Um, don't underestimate Flak's Battlecopters. When he, pop his, when he pops his luck skills, they can do insane damage to vehicles. And because they're Battlecopters, he can afford to take gambles. It doesn't really hurt him that much if he, uh, if he rolls low, because, of course, he won't have to deal with any counterattack damage. It's a little bit different when it's a Copter versus Copter fight, but uh, Copter versus, like, any ground vehicle, you can pop your normal power or superpower and pretty much just go ham. So, uh, Deadafs is already capping his comm tower. I'm assuming Diaphanous is going to do the same. Um, both players are... Uh, Deadafs is actually quite ahead in the, in the income right now. I'm guessing he just went for a slightly more economic capture opener compared to Diaphanous. But we'll see. D turn 4 rolls in now, ladies and gentlemen. It may seem like they have a lot of time. Diaphanous has 14 minutes. Deadafs has 12 minutes ticking down. But trust me, once we get into the late game, that timer is going to start ticking down and it's going to be very stressful. If you end up in a position where you... Um, where you're pretty much on the clock, where you have to deal with like two minutes uh, for every turn, you pretty much have no time to think. You just have to make your moves and you just have to rely on pure gut feeling. Now, I apologize. I am a little bit sick when recording this video. I hope you guys can forgive me if I sound a little bit weird or if I cough a little bit. Uh, I do apologize. Mm -mm -mm. So, nothing spectacular happening in the early opener of this match. No crazy recon openers or anything like that. No tanks. Both players just committing to infantry for now. Uh, Artillery can be strong on End of Trophy if you can set them up, uh, but both players have captured the central properties early on, so you're not going to be able to deny that with artillery. Uh, so once these two cities are captured, usually both players tend to focus on the edges of the map. Um, but we'll see what happens. Neither player has committed to any vehicles as of yet, but uh, uh, no, still only infantry for Diaphanous. Trying to see, no, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's any tanks around here or anything like that. No, I didn't see any tanks. It's a little bit different to, to commentate a live match because you don't, you actually don't get to decide when the actions are going to happen. Uh, you kind of have to pay attention, which is not something I'm very good at. So, Dead F's still only building infantry. Both players have taken the central properties right now. Dead F's is capturing up here in the east. You can also get some infantry skirmishes down here uh, occasionally. Uh, it really, like, there are, like, in the early games of End of End Trophy, you get conflicts here, 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 and here. And then as the match kind of progresses, you can't, it can tend to devolve into, like, a top versus bottom. You can even see base race scenarios on this map. It's pretty common. Uh, so, anyway, Dead F's thinking right now. Um, both players are still tied up in the capture game. Both players just going for their properties. This map, this map is a little slow to get going, but once it gets going, it is really, really cool. It's not as cool as Caustic Finale, but we already did Caustic Finale as uh, round one of the tournaments. I didn't want to repeat it. Anyway, Deadf's not going for that airport. You can start producing those valuable flak, flak copters, as I like to call them. They are incredibly strong. So uh, let's see if he decides to go for Battlecopter spam or not. He has 7,000 in the bank. There we go. First tank of the game, ladies and gentlemen. First tank of the game. Um, I just noticed my cursor doesn't... I have, like, the spinning cursor, but when I click on the tank, it reverts back to the Windows cursor. <coughs> <coughs> my apologies. So we have our first tank, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dead Fs can choose whether or not he wants to go... Uh, Wests and put pressure on here if he wants to move it east. Kind of depends on where Diaphanous decides to plunk down his tank, if they wish to plunk the tanks down in the same area, or whether or not they wish to keep them separated. 
we'll just have to see. So, um, yeah, still lots of neutral properties in the area that have not been captured. These two, these three properties are up for grabs. Diaphanous is probably going to grab them. Dedos might be able to grab this one. It kind of depends on whether or not Diaphanous wants to deny him or not. I will definitely have to say that Diaphanous has an advantage. Like, I think Cold is just strictly a better CO than Flak in a mixed space format. Uh, unless Dedos gets some crazy luck rolls. It is very annoying, though, to fight against Flak because sometimes his infantry can just shoot so hard and they can deal a lot of damage to tanks and stuff like that. Things you just aren't able to plan around. And I'd actually say that, that Flak does get slightly better in live games where you just where you just don't have time to plan. You just yeet your forces in and take, take big gambles. The more of a risk taker you are, the better Flak becomes, in my opinion. Mm -mm -mm. All right, Diaphanous. Sitting on 14k in the bank. Let's see if he decides to spend them on anything meaningful. I'm wondering if we're going to see artillery in a live match. Artillery in a live match very scary. Um, you got to be careful. Uh, if you, uh, if you're, <laughs> the you need you need to make sure your walls are on point if you're going to pull that off. So, but yeah, sitting on 14,000, still thinking. Um, Dedos has this one tank down here. How is Diaphanous going to respond to it? We're just going to have to see. Now Dedos is going for this, uh, or sorry, Diaphanous is going for this property. Interesting, I think uh, Dedos is probably going to be able to deny him this property right here. Uh, we'll see if he goes for it or not. Problem is, Dedos can plonk out a Battlecopter in this in this airport right here. And once he does that, uh, it's going to be very hard for Diaphanous to do anything. He's going to have to bring an Antire all the way over here to be able to zone it out. Now that's another thing you got to be very careful about when playing End of and Trophy 2. Uh, it's the fact that um, airports can very quickly be locked by Antire. So you need tank support around your airport to prevent that from happening if your opponent is bringing up an anti-air. So uh, got to be very careful about that. You, re you really don't want to get airport locked on this map. So Diaphanous is thinking pretty hard now. He's been thinking for over a minute. There we go. His first tank comes out. How you manage time is so crucial in a live game. I've seen a lot of people lose games just because they take too long. Time is a resource in a live match, and you have to use it wisely. I really don't think you should spend a minute thinking on what unit to buy in, during day five. You're going to regret that later on. Just buy a unit and roll with it. Honestly, if you can, if you can tie, if you come into a position where you have like 10 minutes left on the clock and your opponent is like on the two minute increment, you have such a huge advantage in the end game because you can afford to actually think on your engagements, your opponent cannot. He just has to move his units as quickly as he can. So uh, a lot of people don't realize how important of a time or how important of a resource time is uh, in these battles and how important it is to conserve it. So I'm curious to see if either of these players uh, are going to uh, be a little bit more careful with their time. I mean, they're still on, they're still well above 10 minutes, so they, they're still feeling relatively comfortable, but that will not last forever, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, first blood goes to Flak. He takes out the infantry. Decent luck roll there, I think. At least they didn't get a bad Flak roll. So, uh, uh, Yos has his tank here. Will he bring it to the right or will he bring it to the left? It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, it will be good either way, I think. If he brings it to the right, he can... It will help him to grab these two properties. I think that's probably what he's going to do. If he sends it left, he might be able to attempt to deny this property from Diaphanous. So it kind of depends what he wants to do. Does he want to deny his opponent income or does he want to secure income for himself? If he wants these two properties, I dare say he should bring this tank up to the right hand side. Uh, but he could also bring it to the left. It's, uh, it really depends on what kind of playstyle he wants to go for an aggressive playstyle or if he just wants to secure those properties. So. Yeah, Dedevs placing his infantry here. He's, he really doesn't want Diaphanous to go and deny this cap right here. If he does, he's prepared to retaliate and kill him. So, uh, and oh, he does send his tank to the left, ladies and gentlemen. So he wants to probably try and deny this property and zone out the infantry. This is going to force Diaphanous to build a tank here, or alternatively could go for a mech, but that's a little bit scary. I'm not sure if I would do that. All right, so uh, yeah, we have two tanks out on the field now. Dedefs has 11k in the bank. That will allow him another tank and some infantry. Uh, neither player committing to artillery or anything like that yet. No recons. Recons can actually be good on this map. 
Uh, especially if you build them in these corner bases right here because of the road, so the recons can reach very quickly. So, um, if I was dead ups here, I might consider plunking down a recon on this base just so I could immediately drive it down and interrupt these caps from Diaphanous, especially considering he has a tank in this vicinity already. So, I think a recon would actually be a decent buy in this base. He can certainly afford it. Of course, if he buys a recon, he can't get a second tank if he wants infantry out of all of his bases. So, that would be a bit of an investment unless he base skips, but I would actually really like to see either a tank or a recon from this base. Let's see what Deadus actually decides to do here. Um, so he's thinking, he's thinking, you know, what is he going to spend his 10k on? Still 12 minutes left on the clock. He doesn't need to stress over time that much yet. So, but both players are very even so far into day five of this game. They have an equal unit count of 21, equal income. Well, Deadus is slightly ahead, but he has the second player advantage of one extra infantry, so that is uh, that makes sense. In value, they are almost exactly tied. But yeah, Deadus is thinking hard now, and this is, again, this is what I was talking about. I don't think they should do this. I understand. I understand thinking and making your moves. I, I get it. I really do, but... I really don't... Oh, there we go. So he did go for the tank in the top left base. No recon, he goes for the tank. So it looks like Deadfs is going to apply pressure on the west flank right here. He has a nice concave, and he also has battlecopters coming out of this airport very soon. So uh, if Diaphanous is not careful here, he's not going to get this property, and he's certainly not going to get this property. So what he needs to do now is he needs to either focus on this area, or he could try and deny these properties from Dead Fs so that they're at least even. I mean, he does have this property. Dead Fs does not have the uh, the mirrored property on this side yet. So if Diaphanous can just deny these two properties from Dead Fs and deny these three, I think he's going to be in a very good position. This is actually where a recon would be very, very useful right now. He has 18k in the bank. Not quite enough to build a medium tank unless he wants the base skip. Could build two tanks and infantry. I think that's probably what he's going to do. <coughs> My apologies, once again, I am very sick. Mm -mm -mm. So, will Diaphanous go down? Yeah, so he's sending his tank to the left-hand side right now. So instead of trying to just roll over Deadfs on his right flank, Diaph Diaphanous is indeed responding to this attack right here. He's moving his tank to the left. Uh, this is scary, though, because this is a very strong side. To, to challenge uh, Dead Epson, considering he will have those Battlecopters. If if, De if Diaphanous wants to take fights here, he'll need to get an Untyr out soon. If not this turn, then at least next turn. Otherwise, those Battlecopters are just going to sewn out his tanks, and Dead Epson is going to take these properties away from him. Meanwhile, I do like um, Diaphanous's position here um, in on, on the right side flank. He's playing very carefully. I think he should definitely be a little bit more aggressive, though. Um, Deadfs has some infantry presence in the center here. Daphnos has the ability to get some road hits with his infantry. I think he should just go for it. Against Flak, it is a good thing to damage units whenever you can, because his luck damage goes down uh, based on his HP. So you, you don't want to leave Flak units on full HP. It's sometimes worth it just to take pot shots at them to reduce their luck damage when the eventual power comes in. Uh, of course, Flax, uh, Flax Normal Power, I believe it sets his luck rating to 49 or 59. I don't remember. I'll put it up on screen. So the more you can reduce a unit's HP, uh, the, the less scary that power becomes. But uh, yeah, Daphnus, it looks like he's going to respond here. Is he going to build an Untire on the left side? That is going to be very interesting to see. Is he going to build an un Untire or is he just going to build tanks? He does have his airport now. Can't produce anything out of it this turn. He will be. A, he will need to wait one more turn before he can do that. So a battlecopter in this situation might not be such a bad idea. Both players are completely even on time right now. Both 11 minutes 42 seconds. So um, in terms of time, they're 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 managing it pretty decently. Both of them. Um, Daphnus is having a good income lead right now, but of course Dedevs hasn't taken his turn yet. He's going to get uh, one, two. Uh, three. He's gonna get three more properties on his turn, so they're going to be they're going to be pretty even. So we'll see what happens here. But yeah, Daphnis capturing this property. Dedevs could interrupt that if he wanted to. I'm really curious to see what unit Diaphanous is gonna decide to build out of his uh, uh, bottom left base here. That's going to be a very crucial unit. He builds a second tank. I wouldn't. Yeah, there we go. Untire. Perfect. I was worried he was not gonna build the Untire. He has to build the Untire now. What Dedevs could do is he could. Um, he could punish him for building the Santire, 
and just decide to front switch away from this area and build tanks instead, because now he effectively has an anti-air, which is kind of useless. Now, Didev could build a battlecopter regardless of the anti-air and just try to dance around it, but considering his opponent has already thrown 8, 8k into an anti-air, it might not be such a bad idea to just forego the battlecopter and try to win with the tank aggression. Day 6 rolls in. Um, 30. <laughs> Deadoffs has a lead timer. Let's go. Um, so let's see what Deadoffs decides to do here. Will he pile on the pressure on the left flank? There are a lot of infantry up for grabs here. Uh, but he has to be careful because Diaphanous has his own tanks in the area. He has the anti air as well. Uh, <laughs> Diaphanous, I, I, I think Deejus would call this a Manx infantry. Uh, but uh, it's it's interesting trying to go for that capture. Actually, I didn't see him do that. Um, I don't really know if he thought he'd be able to get away with that. I mean, this is just a free pickup for, for Deadass, I think. So, I mean, he did distract his tank, I suppose. Pulled it away. But if Deadass wanted to pull his tank over here anyway, it wouldn't really have mattered. So, anyway. So, yeah, Deadass is actually... He's consolidating his forces pretty well on the right-hand side here. Um, he finished capping the city. Let me just refresh real quickly so that the capture bug goes away. The capture bug is that the capture symbol will keep displaying even after an infantry is done capping. You can fix this by refreshing. So yeah, Dedef has this city now. He ties income. Diaphanous is playing very cautiously on the right-hand flank. Considering how heavily Dedef is putting on the pressure on the left flank, I would expect Diaphanous to go a lot harder on the right flank, but he's being very cautious, and that might just cost him. In a live match, you need to have some guts. You need to have some balls. Uh, if you're not ballsy in a life match, if you just play carefully and just sit back and let your opponent come to you, that may not always work out so well for you. You don't have time to set up walls, you don't have time to use the move planner, so you might as well just eat, you know? Be, be like Star Clash, eat. So, Deadass, he can go for this property right here. Um, I think that would be a good move. I don't think Diaphanous is in a position to interrupt it. He has three infantry here. Ooh, uh, Deadass takes a, is that a fruit? Ooh, no, he places his tank. Ooh, interesting. So Dedefs actually takes a shot. He interrupts the cap, despite there being a tank in range. So, uh, hmm. How is that going to work, I wonder? I mean, he does... So if Daphne strikes it, he has another tank to back it up, and... This is actually a pretty good move by Deadfs because uh, Diaphanous definitely doesn't want to take engagements here. It's right next to Deadfs' base. So whatever tanks he builds out of this base can reinforce same turn. So this is super good play by Deadfs. Like he he recognizes that this is where he wants to take the conflict. If he can focus all of his fighting in this area, then he's in a super good position because both of his bases, like this base is one turn away reinforcement wise, this base is two turns away reinforcement wise. So yeah, taking that shot with the tank, pretty smart. Um, that I was gonna capture. He still hasn't captured this property on the right hand side here, and this this neutral city is also not captured yet. So I'm just curious right now: is Deadfs going to build battlecopters? Um, that is what I'm gonna be very interested in seeing right now. Uh, is he going to build battlecopters, or is he going to like forego the battlecopters and just let the entire sit there? Black battlecopters are very strong, so he'd be. You'd be a fool to forego such a such an advantage. I mean, and whenever you can get luck damage with battlecopters, they are just absolutely spectacular. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, that that F's about to dip underneath t ten minutes. I think for the first time during the match. As turns get more complicated, you really will be grateful for any time you've been able to save up in the early game, I'm telling you. This timer right here is going to become a major issue going into this match, and both players are really going to start to feel the pressure. So Deadass builds an infantry, another tank. Yeah, this is going to be all-out tank warfare right here, ladies and gentlemen. In live matches, you see a lot of tanks. Uh, people just don't have the patience for artillery in live matches. Some people do it. There are some some crazy people who do it. I think Inkugarka did it. But um, but Deadass, no, they're both just going tanks. Now, in a tank slugfest, I dare say Flak is actually pretty strong because his infantry during powers, they can take some decent HP off those vehicles. So, anyway, day seven rolls in. Diaphanous, 12, 12, 12 minutes left on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. What is he going to do? He just got interrupted here. Deadass is setting up a scary attack here. I don't think he's going to get the city. I think he should just count his, he should just pull his forces away. He's not getting that. Not with three infantry in the vicinity here. Is he going to build a battlecopter? I think I would if I were him. 20k in the bank. He can certainly afford a battlecopter, a tank, and infantry on all of his bases. So I think that's probably what he's going for. Deadfs has a decent infantry presence over on this side. 
Uh, he will... I really don't think Diaphana should let him get these two cities, considering Dedefs is doing a good job denying him over here. Um, so, um, yeah, I... Hmm, it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, he's not in a position to interrupt this. Both of his infantry right here are out of position. And he's capping with this infantry. So yeah, Dedefs is just gonna straight up... I mean, he could definitely send these two infantry in and interrupt, and I think I definitely would do that if I were him. Um, yeah, so now already he's moving his, his entire into range of the airport, locking that down. There is an infantry shielding it, but that infantry will die very soon if uh, Dedefs is not careful. Uh, now, Dedefs could just not build battlecopters, and I think at this point you may just not want to do that. This entire is basically just a glorified infantry killer at this point, so that's a big, big investment for a very little payoff. Um, so, um, but there we go. Battlecopter comes out from Diaphanous. That's pretty good. Um, he can use this Battlecopter now to exert a lot of pressure. That forces an Antire out of Dedas base over here. He definitely doesn't want to build. He, he would love to build like a medium tank uh, or something like that uh, out of this, his base this turn. Because once once things devolve into like a tank spam fest, the first player who can afford to tech up and get a medium tank usually are in a pretty good spot. But uh, yeah, it looks like Diaphana is definitely just responding here. I think he realizes he's not going to get this city, so I would definitely just pull back. He needs to be very careful, though, not, not to let this tank strike the entire. It is out of range for now. But uh, but yeah, this Battlecopter, a very smart move. It's going to force a response out of Deadhouse. It's going to lessen his attack on this side. And this Battlecopter can be very annoying. It can force out a bot it can force out an Antire, and then it can switch into the middle and be over here in no time. And the Antire is kind of just stuck on the other side, chasing the Battlecopter. So uh, it it's a smart move. That's why Battlecopters are very strong, especially on mixed base maps. So um, let's see what happens now. Uh, very curious to see if Deadfs is going to pull his infantry back. I think he definitely should. Now he's moving up his infantry here too. He's going to exert pressure on this side of the map. Very smart. Deadfs is pushing hard on the left. Diaphanous should push hard on the right. I, I, I have always been a fan of uh, answering aggression with aggression. You know, just if someone pushes hard on one side, you push hard on the other side. If they push hard on one side and you pull all your forces back to defend, unless you're very good at defending, unless you have a lot of artillery in position, it usually doesn't go well. So, yeah, Diaphanous has a Santire in position. Um, what is he going to do with the rest of this money? Definitely going to build a tank and three infantry, I think. Or, sorry, a tank and two infantry. I would expect him to probably build the tank in the upper, uh, upper middle base. Maybe he'll build it down in the bottom left. It can reinforce pretty quickly in that case. Um, and then he's probably just going to build infantry in his other bases and send them over to the right-hand side. Dedevs has a very little on the right-hand side, so... Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, he definitely pulls back. Smart move by a Diaphanous. He realizes he can't really fight this, but... I mean, he has two tanks in the vicinity right here, so if Dedefs, if Dedefs wants to take this fight here, he's gonna run into a lot of resistance here. So, uh, both players playing very smart so far. Diaphanous is, is a very good player. Very impressive player. He said he wasn't very fond of playing live, but so far, he's playing very solidly. He's not leaving any big openers for Dedefs to exploit. And they're both completely even in both income and unit value. And slightly in unit count. Oh! Okay, Diaphanous. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, he gets us. Oh, he, he, had the, he had the road bonus. Okay, that's why he was able to two-shot there. Normally, two infantry cannot two-shot an infantry on property without a bit of a firepower boost. But Diaphanous, of course, he got that road bonus and he has the comm tower as well. So he was able to interrupt that capture. Now, Dedefs will, of course, be able to just move on to the city and attack next turn. So, But still, denying him that 1k is a pretty smart move, I'd say. Uh, it's a scary for Dedefs right now, because he can certainly build an Antire, or he can build a Battlecopter, but what Diaphanous can do is he can move his infantry in, kill the infantry, and then one, two, three, four, five... Actually, no, the Antire is not in range yet because of this forest. I had to stop and count there for a little bit. So, uh, he has... Dedefs has one turn to get that Battlecopter out before the, his airport gets locked. I think maybe getting that Battlecopter out would be smart. You really don't want to be the player without Battlecopters. If your opponent is building Battlecopters and you're not, you're at a big disadvantage, because the unit that, that means your opponent will not only have a unit lead over you, because he can use his bases to build infantry, and then he effectively has an extra production building, but uh, Battlecopters are just so versatile, so whoever has more Battlecopters usually has a great advantage. So Daphnis interrupts another capture from Dead Evs, denying him some income. 
moves on to the lab. Um, so this map has two labs, I think, on each side, if I remember correctly. Yeah, two labs. Labs work like HQs, in case you don't know. I should probably have said this at the start of the match. Uh, so if both of your labs get captured, you lose the game by HQ cap. Uh, it's very hard to capture these two labs, though. These labs can fall, certainly. These labs, very hard to take. So an HQ cap, probably not going to happen on End of End Trophy. I, I've seen it happen a few times with, like, Sami players. They've been able to, like, use victory marches and capture both the labs, but otherwise it's it's not how you're going to win this. Um, I will say also that there is a capture victory. I'm going to take a look at, um, let's see, let's go for the info. Yeah, the amount of capture, 32 properties. So if, if either player manages to get 32 pro properties, they will win the match. But Deadf's turn rolls in, and he's doing a decent counterattack here, attacking in. Uh, against Diaphanous. Very curious to see if he's going to build that Bottlecopter. He definitely should, in my opinion. It's the last turn he'll be able to build it before De uh, before Diaphanous locks him out. Mm -mm -mm. And he definitely has to build an Antire in this base. And once he does, Diaphanous can just move the Bottlecopter over here, which forces another Antire out of the base. And this is why Bottlecopters are so good. They can force out multiple Antires. Um... So, um, let's see what he decides to do. Attacks, get, I think he gets a decent luck roll there. It's always difficult to know with Flak, unless you really know your values, but I think that was a slight high roll. Um, so you can actually check if you use the, if you use the damage calculator, one of my favorite tools. You can see, like, Flak's range if, like, both, both units are on, are on roads or bridge. Actually, I should probably do the bridges because of coal. So as you can see, Flak, on average, day-to-day, -day, 51 to 84. Uh, as opposed to 50, 60 to 69, so uh, it's uh, it, it's um, it's a pretty big discrepancy, dis 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 discrepancy. So, and Dedevs does indeed build the Battlecopter, so he recognizes that he should get one out while he still can. Even goes for a little cute attack here in the mountains, um, and he has two tanks ready to go. He can move them in at any time. Uh, this is so tense, you guys. I mean, this is any moment now we're going to see a clash here. I just noticed that Diaphanous is really down on time. Six minutes and 46 seconds compared to Deadev's nine minutes. <coughs> this might just be where Deadev's uh, live experience will aid him here. He might just be able to play better under pressure than Diaphanous. So, uh, wow. Um... If I was Deadfs now, I'd definitely be playing a little faster and, and be making decisions a little bit quicker just to retain this time advantage. I know it's very tempting to take your time when you're ahead of time, but, you know, as a, as a smart player once said, I don't know who, but when you're ahead, get more ahead. Some StarCraft Pro, I think. And I think once you have a time advantage, you should definitely capitalize on that and not throw it away. It's very tempting to go like, oh, nice, I can take my time now because I've got like four minutes out of my opponent. No, 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 no. Uh, Pressure them faster, make turns quickly, and and and, and stress them out. Because you have also have to t t keep in mind: the longer you take with your turns, you're also giving your opponent more time to think. So, if you sit for two minutes and you're trying to formulate a strategy, know that your opponent is doing the exact same thing on 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 your turn. They're sitting around thinking about what they should do to respond to your attacks. So, if you play just a little bit quicker than what you're usually used to. You can actually stress out your opponent quite a bit. I've done this in multiple live matches to great effect. So, okay, so Deadoffs is trying to capture this property right now. He is ahead 1k, so um, if he can grab this property, he'll be ahead 2k. Not enough to make a big difference, but uh, it will start to add up if you get several properties. Deadoffs is also moving this tank in here. Uh, I'm curious to see if he's going to build an Antire or if he's going to wait and see where this Battlecopter goes. Diaphanous has two properties right here, which he'll definitely get soon. So he'll be up to 21k. So uh, I don't think there's any way Deadoffs can really deny him that unless... Because these infantry already moved. Oh, interesting. He moves in with a tank and takes a shot here. I guess he's feeling very confident because of this Battlecopter. I mean, we do have an Antire here, but with the amount of tanks in the vicinity, this Antire is going to find it very difficult to strike this Battlecopter, especially with the rivers here blocking it. So, but yeah, Deadfs is piling on the aggression right here. He's moving all of his units over to the left-hand side. So these tanks are now going to be ready to strike. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's putting up his units pretty beautifully. This tank is not in range unless this infantry falls. Uh, or sorry, <laughs> this is Deadfs. This is Diaphanous' uh, infantry. Uh, yeah, he can just move it away and strike it, but does he want to? That's the big question. 
Hmm. So Dedefs is now moving a pretty considerable force over on this side. I mean, Daphnis probably has to divert a tank to help defend against this, lest he wants to lose both of these properties. He definitely doesn't want to lose these two. I mean, they are technically Dedefs' properties, but um, he, I could just let him have them, I guess. So day eight rolls in. Diaphanous now with eight minutes left on the timer. Blocks the tank with his one HP infantry. Sends in the anti-air. It's not in range of any tanks. Um, ooh, this is a little scary, though. Can't this tank just strike the... Oh, I think that might have been a little bit of a blunder, Diaphanous. Because unless you can wall off this anti-air right now, this tank can just go like this. I mean, he can move his in... He can block it. He can block the... Um, he can block this uh, tank with, by putting his own tank up on the city. So that's something he could definitely do, and I think he will. So that might have just been a free pickup for him. We'll see, though. If there's th if there's any chink in his defenses, Dedefs is probably going to find it. Um, so yeah, Dedefs did not respond with Empire. Diaphanous is keeping his Battlecopter centered, waiting to see where Dedefs is going to respond. Um, so this is smart. He's not Dedefs is not playing this. Um, he's not playing this nervously. He's not like overreacting. He's like, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait and see where the Battlecopter goes before I formulate a response to it. So, moving up with the infantry right here, uh, we're going to see a lot of infantry battles taking place here. I will say, like, we're in day 8, and there's been very few engagements. Very few engagements. We bring up the stats right here, you can see, like, 3 kills and 4, three kills and four deaths for Diaphanous. So, it's been a very, um, both players are being very cautious so far. Don't see a lot of aggression taking place, but that just means we're going to have a very explosive mid-game. So, Diaphanous... Capturing this property right now. Uh, is he going to pull back on the northern flank? I think he probably will. Uh, I think he needs to divert one tank to deal with this. Uh, he does take the, the hit there, so uh, he goes in here. Uh, that, yeah, the Battlecopter is not in range, so solid engagement from Diaphanous right there. Wonder if Dedefs is going to find a way to punish that. Right now, Diaphanous' force march is about halfway charged. Dedefs' brute force is... Uh, little almost halfway too so both both players have a, a power of uh, a power meter of three stars Diaphanous definitely has the better power though uh, don't get me wrong I love brute force it's a great funny power but uh, but forced March and trail of woe just so much more versatile in a situation like this I respect dead for picking flak in the finale uh, it's a great move, but uh, I, I, it, it's going to be tough for him because Diaphanous is a strong player. Could be that Dedefs looked at his rating and he was like, ah, I can deal with this guy, just like 1300, easy. But um, Diaphanous has never lost, so it might be that he's playing far below his actual rating, similar to how Voice of Akasha works. So. But so far I'm impressed with Diaphanous. I'm, I'm really impressed. He's definitely keeping up with Dedefs here, a much higher rated player, and I'm not seeing any major misplays. It seems like most of his moves are being made really well. And, uh, in fact, I would say that the longer this game goes on, the more it will probably favor Diaphanous, because he's a CO with a big movement increase, whereas Dedefs is not. So in, in huge engagements, the plus two move that he gets from his superpower is going to aid him a lot more in prolonged battles. So, uh, he brings in his tank, sets up a good wall with his infantry. Five minutes on the clock, though. He, this is This is the point where both players will need to start playing faster, unless they want to get timed out. Like, you ha you cannot sit and think for a minute before you, like, you just have to build something. I really mean that. Like, playing live, you cannot afford to sit and scratch your balls. You have to just buy a unit and move it. This is a resource, and every time it ticks down, you're in a worse position. So, uh, but yeah, Daphnis is moving back. He's letting Dedos have these two properties. That, that's solid. I, I, I agree with that. He's going to get this property as well. So they're going to be tied on income. Uh, Dedos, he definitely doesn't want to let Dedos get this property. He can keep denying that. i say Daphnis' position is pretty good here. Um, I don't think I like... Dedos could definitely attack here. I think maybe it's time for a medium tank. A, a medium tank would be solid here. Um, could... Ooh, no, okay. The tank is not in range of the Battlecopter. I was wondering, but no, it's not yet in range. But uh, this Battlecopter is going, going to change the playing field once it comes in. So, And I have a feeling Diaphanous is going to bring his Battlecopter into the center too, where it can assist on this side. Looks like this is definitely going to be the important part of this battlefield right here. So Dedef's moving his infantry down in the south now. Um, he's probably want to go and grab this property as well, I imagine. Good wall from Diaphanous here. Dedef's is not going to be able to pick up any free infantry here, unless he wants to be struck by this tank. So, uh, yeah. 
In comes the tank. He takes that engagement. I think that's a decent luck roll with Black. He doesn't take any damage back. And goes on the city. Kills a tank. I think that's the first tank to get killed. Day 8, we see the first tank death. Um, interesting. So Diaphanous doesn't definitely have... He has some road plays here. He has some road plays here. So this is... He definitely wants to take engagements around the road whenever he can. And it is in Dedev's best interest to not let Diaphanous utilize his road bonus. It's not a big bonus, but every little bit counts in a match like this. And it, the higher the level of the Advanced Wars match, the bigger impact small bonuses is going to have. So these roads, very important for Diaphanous to want to try and center his conflict around them. He's going to get a shot here. He can kill this tank. He would have been able to do that without the road, obviously. But yeah, Dedevs, this Battlecopter needs to evacuate. He needs to get it out of the way. Um, the problem is, if he build, if he sends it all the way over here, Diaphanous can then build another Empire in response. He might not want to do that, though. So... He could also bring in his own Battlecopter. So that's something he definitely could do. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Again, Dedevs, too. I mean, he's a little bit ahead in time, but he still cannot afford to take too long. He's... Almost down to six minutes. The Aphan is dipping below five minutes now. So the timer is going to become more and more and more crucial now. Both players will just have to move as quickly as they can. So, uh, but yeah, Dedefs is clearing out some infantry on the right-hand side here. Um, the Aphan is going to get this property. This property is still contested. These two properties have not been claimed yet. Both players are now starting to reach their maximum level of income. It's going to be around 22k. So at that point, we're gonna start probably to see some players tank up. I think if I was if I was Dedefs, I think I might would have contemplated a medium tank out of this base right now because there's so many tanks in the vicinity. Getting a medium tank over here would really change up the playing field. Could be though that he's feeling like that might not be a great idea because if he builds a medium tank here, he gives up a lot of pressure on the right flank. That being said, he has his Battlecopter and Dedefs still doesn't have an Untire. Dedef, Dedefs might just have to build an Untire here against Diaphanus' Battlecopter. This is Battlecopter is going to start gobbling up infantry next turn, if it's not stopped. And that's going to be very, very bad for Dedefs, so he definitely needs some kind of response, and quick. Dedefs' timer is about to dip below 5 minutes. This is where both players will start to get feel, really feel the pressure, because as the match gets more and more advanced, uh, the timer will tick lower and lower, and you'll have to make your moves much, much quicker. But yeah, so far both players just sizing each other up, taking their time, uh, neither player wants to commit to a great attack. As I suspected, the Battlecopter heads east. It's kind of the only way it really can go, con considering the Santaya right here. So he's in a good position. It kind of forces Diaphanous to have to build an Antire, lest he wants this Battlecopter to start harassing his tanks. So, uh, but that has dipping below five minutes, man. You gotta hurry. You can't afford to take this much time, my friend. You're gonna struggle so much. He's thinking. He's thinking about what he wants to buy. This is such a mistake. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. You cannot afford to spend a minute thinking on your build orders in a live match. He's gonna come back to punish you. Seems like both players are equally bad at managing their time, though. So they're definitely both going to feel it. Dedevs goes in, captures the property. He's gonna get that next turn. I don't think Diaphanous has any means of interrupting it. No, this Untire is not in range. Um, nope, definitely not. Ah. Could maybe use his tanks, but that's scary. Dedefs is probably going to build a tank out of that base, so I'm expecting him to do that. So let's see what happens. Dedefs, man, he's almost down to four minutes. This is not good. He's taking too long. Takes a shot here with the infantry. He's, he can definitely apply some... Ooh, interesting. Oh, all right. Okay. So uh, he's feeling confident that even though Dedefs pulls one of his tanks out... He doesn't have a tank in range to reinforce here, so um, I really don't know how this is going to go. Like, if Diaphanous just goes and strikes first, it could happen. Now, very important, Diaphanous has his normal power. It is ready. It will be ready next turn if he takes a couple of engagements. That gives him that plus one movement. That can be crucial for capturing Battlecopters, getting first strikes on tanks, etc. So uh, that is something, ma planning around movement powers in live matches is just so freaking hard. Dedefs builds a, an Untire, well he kind of has to now. If he builds a tank, the Battlecopter can harass the tank from its spawn points, which drains repair funds, which is really annoying. So yeah, he kind of has no choice, he has to build the Untire in this turn. So what this Battlecopter can do now is dart like this and start gobbling up infantry on this side. 
And uh, yeah, that's exactly that's probably what Daphnis is going to do. He's going to send his battlecopter up here and start gobbling up free infantry, forcing another anti-air out uh, from Dead Fs. So, oh, there we go. Forest March is activated, ladies and gentlemen. He gets a nice... Oh, that's a good roll, too. Oh, my goodness. 9-3. That is really strong. Oh, he interrupts the, the capture of his property. Beautiful. Now, Dedos does will have his Brute Force, but will he pop it? We will see. Okay, Diaphanous takes the shot. Well played. He interrupts the cap. That plus one extra movement. So good. So good in a mixed space format. The road bonus is the cherry on top. He's not really getting a lot out of it now. He can... Eh, there's like one road bonus that he can get. Eh, two actually, if he attacks here. So, uh, but yeah, now he's also threatening this property. So this is scary. On end of end trophy, the moment you let your guard down, you can lose properties very quickly. This is the how a mixed base map works. So, yeah, it's a strong attack. I think placing that tank there was a little bit of a blunder from Deadass, if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't really understand why he did that. Um... But, uh, yeah, Diaphanous, you can see he's playing quicker now. You can definitely see he's picking up the pace right now. He's moving very fast. He only has five minutes left on the timer. So, um, what is he going to build, though? He has a tank ready to move from this space. He still has his anti-air locking down the uh, the airport. Oh, he has to, oh, he sends it back, though. He recognizes that these tanks is going, going to pummel his anti-air next turn. So he's giving he's giving up the airport. He's letting Dead Fs produce Battlecopters again. But he realizes that he's probably dead here. Uh, if he allows Dead Fs to pop his Brute Force. It was a bit of a tactical power from Diaphanous. He popped it to get a slight advantage. Normally, Cold players like to save up for their super. Oh, he gets the cap here as well. I don't think there's anything... I don't think there's anything Dead Fs can do to interrupt this unless he pulls a tank over here. Oh my goodness. He has... Of course, Diaphanous has to build an entire out of here to ward away the Battlecopter. He really has no choice. And now the Battlecopter can... It, it, it's going to be scary, though, because... I mean, the Battlecopter can go here, I suppose, where it would be relatively safe from the, because the mountain is blocking the entire. So he definitely could do that. Uh, the, the, that's a possibility for sure. Yes, yeah, so he's pulling his tanks back, actually, not going overly aggressive. A very careful player is Diaphanous. Very, very careful defensive player. Reminds me a little bit of Inkugark, minus the artillery play. Uh, he's definitely not overextending. He recognizes that the, the Brute Force can be popped next turn, and that can be devastating, especially if he allows a lot of infantry engagement. Diaphanous is playing this really well, in my opinion. He is slightly ahead in unit count, um, but I'm really impressed with his play, actually. He's also slightly ahead of time compared to Dead Fs right now, so if he continues to make his move quickly, and he pressures Dead Fs on this flank, which he is dominating on the right-hand flank right here. Dead Fs needs to pull back. He is His units are going to get picked off here. Um, so this is this is incredible. Like, if Dead Fs doesn't pull everything back now, he risks getting rolled over on his right side flank. And he definitely doesn't want that to happen. So, yeah, this is... Uh, oh my goodness. We're on day nine. This is, this is where the real mid-game kicks in here. So this is where we're going to see a lot of engagements taking place very, very soon. So... Three minutes, though. Got to keep moving. Um, I'm going to stop pointing it out. I'm guessing that's a little bit annoying that I keep stressing, but uh, um, it, it really needs to be set. So, um, builds infantry. Builds another tank on his left flank. I guess he really doesn't want to let these cities fall to death. So that kind of makes sense in a way. Um, <coughs> if I was Diaphanous, I might have just foregone this flank and just focused everything on rolling up the right side. But uh, then again, he is a much better player than me, so... But uh, uh, less than two minutes on this timer now. Gets a good shot off the road right there with the road bonus. I don't think he would have killed that without it. Day 9 rolls in. Dead Fs has five minutes left on his timer. 22 income. Could pop his Brute Force, but he doesn't have that many good engagements. He interrupts the cap. Yeah, that's... Considering Diaphanous pulled back, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for him to capture here. This is basically just a free infantry that he's giving away. Um, that has lost his Battlecopter that he needs to get to some kind of safe heaven. He also built a Recon last turn. I didn't even catch that. That's a great uh, play because this Recon can really uh, help in this area with all these infantry. It has a nice little road that it can move to. Uh, that has picks up a free infantry right here. Uh, looks like he's not going to push super hard on this side. Um, 
Yeah, he definitely is feeling the pressure on the right-hand flank now, so he's going to start moving the units over to the right-hand side. Yeah, that's the safe spot for the Badacopter, which I talked about earlier. Here it sits pretty comfortably. Uh, it's away from... Oh, no! Oh, no! Dead Fs, you moved your Badacopter in range of... Oh, no, never mind, never mind. Dead still has his power active. I'm stupid, I'm stupid. It looked like he moved in within range, but of course, Dead power is going to fade next turn, and then the Badacopter will lose one point of movement. Of course, Dead Fs would take that into account, even in a live game. That makes a lot of sense. So, uh, yeah, Dead Fs not take. He's not pulling back, though. He's actually taking engagements. Oof. He's got some balls on him, this guy. All these infantry are probably going to... Oh, he even captures. This is... Uh, yeah, he's pulling back with his tank, at least. Thank God. Um, I think maybe a medium tank? The problem is he needs that tire, too. There's a, there's a battlecopter coming in this way. Uh, lots of tanks from Diaphanous that can crush down on him. He needs, he needs some kind of high-tech unit to deal with this push. Uh, he's not going to be able to deal with this on his own. These, all these infantry are going to fall next turn. They're going to just get wiped off the map. Diaphanous is going to do a spring cleaning on the side of the map here. So, if Deadfs is not careful, I think this move is very ballsy. Deadfs is a guy known for having huge balls, but this might be a little bit too risky. Okay, so this recon in, he's got to, got to be careful. There's tanks around the corner. Obviously, you know, it looks like he's in range, but he's not. Um, because uh, Diaphanous' power will fade next turn. Brings up his Antire. Man, this is a close match. This is, I, I gotta be honest, guys. Going into this match, I fully expected Dead Fs just to roll over Diaphanous. Because he's so much stronger than him rating-wise. But, man, Diaphanous is playing so well. Um, they're both tight on time. Both tight on income. Relatively tight in unit value. Unit count is also pretty similar. They're they're dead even at the moment. Although I will say I favor Diaphanous' uh, positioning slightly over Dead Fs. I think he has a solid attack on the right flank here. And Dead Fs is he's exerting a little bit of pressure here, but he's not really committing. I mean, we'll see what he does next. What he does uh, next turn, if he decides. To, I mean, he, he will get this property, which is nice. And I don't think there's anything Diaphanous can do to interrupt it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. He can bring the tank down, but that would lose him a tank, so that's not really a viable option. I don't think I would do that. Um, but yeah, this could get very scary. Of course, Dead Fs is sitting on that power. He could pop it, and once he does, he can get some nice rolls. So, but still, one minute, 40 seconds left on his timer right now. This is starting to get very crucial. Both players are going to be playing on increment very soon. So... Mm. Dead Fs comes out with a tank in his uh, right side base, builds another tank here. Um, he does have his Antire coming in here now, and that should serve to ward away this Battlecopter. Of course, this Battlecopter can fly north and harass the infantry. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, this, is a, this is a very tense situation right now. It's like, I'm just waiting for an explosion to go off. Okay, here we go. Day 10 rolls in. Diaphanous. Is he going to push the attack? Moves on to the lab. Good, yeah, as I said, these infantry, they're goners. They're gone. They're all going to be wiped off the map. Yeah, I don't know why Dead Ups went for this capture. This was, this is, he's just, he, this, these are Manx infantry, as they just would say. Like, these, these infantry are all going to die. So, but maybe it was inevitable. I don't know if you could have kept on to them. Might, they might have been picked off anyway. Dead Ups now going for a capture here on Diaphanous' side. Uh, sorry, Diaphanous going for a capture here. Taking one of the uh, properties away. Uh, there is an anti here, but of course, the anti would love to strike that juicy Battlecopter and not be stuck fighting infantry. Um, but this infantry looks like it might actually survive with one HP left, so I guess not all of them would die on this turn. Diaphanous has a nice time advantage right now. Four minutes, the Dead Fs won. So if he can keep playing, if he can keep this up, he's going to be in a good position. Uh, let's see what he decides to do. He has some forces over here that are kind of trapped in the corner, surrounded by Dead Fs forces. He can't really utilize them all that well, but he's going for it now. Yeah, he is going for it. He will just... He, he takes that, that hit on the nose because he knows he has a massive tank advantage. Of course, the moment he attacks over here, Dedevs can bring his tanks over here into the battlefield as well. Uh, kills the 1 HP infantry now, does Diaphanous, and um, yeah, he's pushing his uh, he's pushing his attack pretty heavily on the right-hand side right here. I think Dedevs needs some kind of high-tech unit out very, very soon. I think a medium tank is warranted. Maybe even a Neo tank if he can't afford it. He has an income of 22k, so he can afford a medium tank and infantry. It would forgo the pressure on other sides of the map, but if he wants to defend this area, he needs some kind of high tech unit out ASAP. So, both players, this is, oh my god, this is this is where they're both going to be tested. Their resolve is going to be tested. Let's see if they become virtuous or afflicted. 
Um, so, uh, yeah. I don't know if uh, Dedefs is probably not going to interrupt this cap. I mean, he could try with an infantry. Uh, the Empire needs to go somewhere safe. It's too bad he doesn't have an allied city to plunk it down on. Um, because these two tanks will just zone out this entire, and this Bottlecopter can just go to town. This is scary, because this Bottlecopter is now in, it's not quite in range. Uh, if he gets his power, it will be. But this Bottlecopter is almost at the point where he can start sh base camping, and at that point, you need to get entire out. If you build tanks, they're just going to get shot down. So, yeah, Dead Fs is, this is looking really bad for him on this side. Both players are still very even in all manner, all counts of this game. Unit count, value, income, time. But again, I think Diaphanus' position is superior to Dedefs right now. And uh, if Dedefs doesn't respond to this attack, then he's going to be in a world of hurt. Um, he could forego this side and just focus everything on the left-hand side and turn it into a base race scenario. The thing is, though, Cole has the advantage there due to his movement powers. He can move faster than you can. So I don't think that is necessarily going to, to, uh, to do a lot. So, anyway, yeah, Diaphanus is now focusing almost all of his forces over on the right-hand side there. Uh, he has an anti ready to go as well. Um, should probably keep this around to make sure this Battlecopter doesn't do anything. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, this is getting very tense. He brings his anti over on the right side to help attack infantry. Interesting. So that means he's got, he has to build another anti then. Otherwise, Dead Fs can just start base camping him. So, it might just be that if he gives up too much map control to attack the right side, he might just actually lose these two bases to Deadfs. So again, this is the problem with a mixed base map. Diaphanous now dipping under a minute. He has to start moving ASAP. This is really bad. <laughs> he cannot afford to think any longer. He just gotta move. Gotta move, buddy. Gotta move, buddy. 48 seconds. Uh, it's getting intense. Alright, so uh, what is he going to build? He's thinking. He's got 5k though. It's not that much to think about. Just build infantry, man. Builds a tank. Yeah, and this infantry in these two bases. Maybe even a mech, honestly. Goes for an attack here. Interesting. 30 seconds left on the timer. Oh no, is he even paying attention to it? Oh, this is bad. This is bad. He's probably paying attention to it. I can't imagine he's not paying attention to it. But, um, yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be, from now on on, he's on increment. He's playing on increment. So from now on, his turns are going to be two minutes. So, um, yeah, I'd end my turn now, buddy. I would really end my turn right now. Seven seconds, dude. You are taking way too long. There you go. Three seconds left on the timer. Now, as I said at the start of this, if their timer ticks down, they get sort of like a buffer of around 30 to 60 seconds. And I think the first time you get timed out, your turn ends, and then you get sort of like a strike. And then the second time you get timed out, you lose. So you can actually afford to be timed out one time, but the but it, the, the game will end. So anyway, Deadfs is facing an insane attack over on the right hand side here. This Battlecopter though is in a very strong position. It can now harass these two bases. Daphne still has his anti here in a very good position, but he can't really advance it forward. Less than the, oh, here we go. Deadfs activates brute force. Here we go. Oh, he's going for the infantry attacks on the tank. He gets a kind of bad roll. And 2 HP. Oh, come on. Oh, no. He didn't pray to Casino Bot. Okay, 4 HP. So, so and so. Um, it could have definitely been a lot better. Um, yeah. Okay, interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> Dead abs. Oh, this is bad. Oh, now he's just going for it, though. Let's go. Ah, oh, he rolls low. This is the problem with Flak. Oh, I, he's beating himself up so hard right now. I can feel it. Oh, that could... He could have dealt like 6 HP of damage to that tank right here with the infantry. That would have been so nice for him. That would have been such a good pickup. But instead, he just rolled shittily. And he dealt 1 HP of damage. But yeah, now Deadevs is not attacking on this side. He's bringing back every single unit that he has to deal with this attack right now. So we are going to see a slugfest. Looks like this part of the map is now completely abandoned. Gotta be careful though, Diaphanous. You got properties here just hanging around, not being defended. And Deadevs could pick up some juicy properties here if you're not careful. So, uh, but yeah, looks like this is going to be where most of the action is going to take place. In the northern part, midsection of the map right here. I think Deadevs says Brute Forest really screwed him over. He, many of his units are now in. Actually, no. Daphnis doesn't have his normal power ready. If he did, he could have definitely struck back pretty hard. 
Another really bad roll from, from Deadass. He is... He did not pray properly to Casino Bot before starting this match. I, I'm telling you, this is a uh, uh, very bad roll again. Oh my goodness, this breaks my flat card. It really does. It's like five bad rolls that he's gotten in a row right now with Brute Force. He's also dipping below 47 seconds now, so both players are going to be reduced to increment from this point on. Two minute turns. That's all they're going to get, unless they want to get timed out. I really hope this match doesn't end in a timeout. That is such a bad way to lose a game. I, I want to see both of them just play super fast. That FZ, you're in 30 seconds. You got to go. Go, 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 go. Can't afford to think. Can't afford to think. You just got to move. You just got to move. Just got to move. Um, he's got an artillery. I didn't even register that. Interesting play, uh, especially when you're playing on increments. Uh, I don't really think he has time to set that up properly, but he probably has a plan for it. Uh, Flak Artillery is actually pretty strong because they deal all... Again, you don't really need to worry that much about luck damage. He's got eight seconds. He's got to hurry. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna go and punish time now. Any moment. Three, two, one, and... 35 seconds. You see there? Now, he, yeah, he ends his turn, though. So he, he just went on... This is what I call punished time, basically. You get, like, a 30-second buffer. You got to play super fast. Oh, here we go. Diaphanous is playing quickly right now. Picks up that umpire. I think that was a... I think that was a blunder from Deadass, honestly. I think I think he he tilted because of his low luck rolls, and he just tossed away that Antire. I am really, really liking Diaphanous' chances right now. Um, I, I, if he can just keep the, the, the speed up, he needs to move fast. Um, I really, really hope they're not having internet issues or anything like that. That would really suck. But yeah, he, he's got some decent engagements that he can take. He gets a shot on a city. Problem with Flak, though, you definitely got to be a little bit careful. Keep in mind, he still has his luck on his counterattacks. So you want to be careful with what engagements you take. You don't want to take engagements unless you're dealing a lot of damage. Uh, you want to be very, like, even this engagement could have been a little scary. This recon could have easily ended up dealing 3 HP of damage back to the Zantire if he'd rolled max luck. So, um... You, want, you don't necessarily want to take engagements all the time against Flak when his Barbaric Blow and uh, Brute Force is up. You can you can re you really get a nasty surprise if they roll very high on their counterattack. In comes the uh, Batacopter. Nice one. His Force March is almost ready. So, uh, here we go. Oh, Dead Eps is having a scary force here, though. Lots of tanks. This is where a medium tank would be a very good pickup. Even, oh, no, he... He pops, okay, he pops his forced march with almost no units left, what? 30 seconds left? It, 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 oh my god, oh my god, oh, he's not gonna get the, ah, oh, it's a bridge, not a road. He can attack with this, oh, this is, this is the cold bros, man, this, this feels so bad. This feels so bad, he doesn't get his bonus from bridges, it's so sad. Still though, decent pickup, but 12 seconds left on the timer, <laughs> he's gotta move. He's got to move. I mean, he can utilize his punish time, though. You can get between 30 and 60 seconds. So, uh, he, he, 3, 2, 1. How much punish time will he get? 29 seconds. So he has 29, 27 seconds left now. He can, he can, he can, and both players are wise to utilize their punish time, for sure. It's a smart thing to utilize your punish time to its maximum. Uh, but you want to be very careful. You don't want to get complacent. There we go. Medium tank. Perfect response. Perfect response from Diaphanous. Now Deadfs can't really attack into here with his tanks anymore. Beautifully played by Diaphanous. I would actually say he's quite ahead right now. He's doing well. Uh, Deadfs has a good income lead right now, though. 24 to 20k. Oh my goodness. Oh, did he time out? He timed out. Oh no. He just. <coughs> Diaphanous. He timed out. No. Oh no! He timed out! Oh, that is such a shame! That is such a shame! Oh, I was hoping he wouldn't do that. I guess he wasn't paying attention. It was such a good turn too! He was really in a good position to win there! So, there you got it, ladies and gentlemen. Dead Eps is the official winner of Season 1 of Egg Cup. Uh, I was expecting him to win. Uh, I was hoping he wouldn't win in this fashion. Really sad to see that he won by a timeout. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay live casting. It's not often I do these. Thank you to everyone who participated in Egg Cup. It has been an absolute blast. Thank you to Diaphanous and Dead Eps for your amazing performance. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.